one never really believed in it. Um, and I'm also, I'm, I'm not one that believes in, um, in the idea that we were spawned from a puddle. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I, I think that DNA uh, in and of itself is too complex to be a, uh, something like I said, we couldn't have been an amoeba at one point in time. It just doesn't make any sense, especially, like I said, with DNA being as complex. I think it's a, a what is it, a six-character uh, uh, alphabet or something like that. Something like that. I've, I've only briefly skimmed over it. That's one of the many things that I have to read up on. But, um, but what's your view on that? Where do you think that we... Uh, came from where we uh, are like I said I believe in creationism I believe that uh, I'm a Christian so I believe the the Bible version of that but I'd like to hear the science side of it from your perspective uh, well we, the, the most advanced molecular biologists in the world and of, of one of which is my brother mm -hmm. uh, will tell you that DNA is an engineered molecule of that there is no doubt right uh, DNA makes up the genes that make up all life on the earth right now. And, and let's just take humans, for example, because uh, we can speak about it. Uh, the, the genes of the human being, there are not enough of them in the human body to make all the proteins that make up the human body. So there is a general assumption, and this is, this is a biochemical assumption, that each gene can make a variety of proteins. In fact, they can probably make a much larger variety of proteins than they actually make, which means that the genes somehow make a choice as to what proteins to make to, to sustain and to build and replace all the cells in the human body. And that decision is made based on the environment of that body. That means how much water you drink, how much sunlight you're exposed to, whether you eat, eat or eat meat or veg vegetables, or what, whether your consciousness is positive or negative, and the consciousnesses that you are around are positive or negative. Your consciousness is part of that environment. The question as to who made the DNA is, can be a theological question, but it can also be an intelligent question, because even the Bible will teach us that we are eternal beings having a mortal experience. Adam didn't burst into being in the Garden of Eden. His body did, but he came, he existed for a long, long time, and was probably well involved in whatever war there was in heaven before this whole thing was built. So the fact that our intelligences are eternal is pretty well accepted. And, and, and by the time you get out of the Old Testament and get through that dogma and get into the New Testament, you realize that there's such a huge difference in approach to the human being that there's a center part of that book that's missing, or at least some extra books that are missing, that, that might not take away from the divinity of it. I believe in that sincerely. But it would take away from the religious end of it so much, and we would stop fighting wars about it. That would be an amazing improvement for our race. The, the fact that the, the physical body, which I call a biological transducer, houses an amazingly intelligent, self-aware being is a miracle in itself. We're probably among only a half a dozen species on the earth that are self-aware. The rest of the animals run on instinct alone and have no personality and have no desire, and, and don't do things for fun or for curiosity, and they don't learn from generation to generation. Um, we do, and, and that is plainly observable, that the human race, even now, is evolving. In this decade, the human race is evolving. And it's evolving because our environment is changing, and we're changing it. And so, therefore, we are engineering ourselves to move forward. Now, I've got a, I've got a question for you regarding the... Um, I think I read something that... Uh, did you... I don't know if you wrote this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that you believe that the Earth is... Uh, what was it? 400 and, or 4.5 billion years old and 7,000 years old? Am, yeah. Am I... 
okay, can you explain that a little bit? Because that was kind of mind-boggling in and of itself, too. Yeah, anciently, this was called the union of the polarity. The fact, okay. the observation that there's two different kinds of matter occupying the same space. One is temporal matter, which is the physical matter that, that we see that ages at 12 and a half billion years old in the universe, four and a half billion years old for the Earth. And the other is a spiritual matter, which is, which is much younger, much higher frequency, and isn't from this neighborhood at all. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much of a big stretch when you look at planet Earth and realize that the Earth is made of two different kinds of matter, because we are made of two different kinds of matter. Our physical body is made of the minerals, peas and carrots and, and uh, beef that makes up the Earth. We eat the Earth and we become it. So our bodies are that old. But the spirits inside are a much higher energy matter. And we exist inside our bodies just like the spirit of the Earth in exists inside the Earth. So it isn't too much of a stretch to believe this because most matter that we see is very spacious. It's sort of like a five-gallon bucket filled with glass marbles. You could very easily pour three more gallons of water in that bucket because there's space between the marbles. That's the way Earth is. A neutrino could go through a light year of Earth and never strike a thing. That's how open the space is of mass that we recognize as Earth or our bodies. So it's we occupy this space, and that's why the Earth is actually both ages. I, for one, uh, I for one believe, uh, and this is my personal belief, that uh, that the Earth was formed uh, through uh, through a process, and the uh, it was bombarded with. Uh, uh, comets and asteroids, and uh, a lot of the the uh, chemicals that make up life here on the Earth were brought here uh, in the beginning with the with the uh, formation of the solar system. And when they came here, they crashed into the oceans, and they over a period of time dissolved, and and the uh, the uh, uh, oceans were were struck by lightning, and the, the lightning in the early days fused those particles together and made the first self-replicating DNA. Is that is that feasible, or am I way off? Uh, I think it's possible, but the odds against it uh, would would mean that uh, that it just wouldn't happen. I, I yeah. think I, I think that. Probably the first life forms on the Earth were algae, and the algae consumed all the carbon dioxide and made oxygen, and that's what made it feasible to bring animal life here. And whether animal life was brought here intelligently or accidentally makes no difference to me whatsoever. I see nothing, nothing, and I, I've studied genetics for years. There is nothing in the record anywhere that shows me that we descended from single-celled animals. All life that is here on the Earth is individually designed and built and brought here, species by species. And they do uh, diversify by natural selection, but they never jump genuses or class. So the, Earth, the Earth could be like a giant uh, uh, planetary zoo or an ark. Absolutely. That's why we called our books The Ark of Millions of Years. Well, Doc, we got about 14 minutes left. How about you, uh, uh, can you explain to the audience what, what your books are about and how they can go about getting some, uh, getting a copy if, uh, if they want to get purchase it? You betcha. You can go to arcofmillionsofyears.com. Uh, the books were written over, well, I put my notes together over a 20-year period, my co-author a 30-year period. She is an amateur archaeologist, and uh, I was a theoretical physicist until I became a physicist. And uh, now I still dabble in the theories, but now I'm more analytical and more instrumental. But the, we started writing in 2001 and 2004. The first book was published December of 2004, and by March of 2005, it was a national bestseller. I had no idea people were interested in this stuff. Um, 
The second book came out a year later, and 